Colin, in trying to discern consciousness, you have to deal with language. Even the word consciousness is a, is a word that has meanings and is, it embeds in it within language. Uh, so uh, how can we understand language? What are the categories for us to be able to appreciate what language is? Well, first of all, language, as human beings use the word, is very different from any other form of animal communication. I think that really is quite clearly um, established. Animals use rich vocabularies mm -hmm. of gestures or sounds to communicate or with, with each other. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So animal communication, in a way, goes way back in, in, in evolution. But the human being seems to have discovered the clever trick of combin using the combinations of characters to convey additional information, syntax, grammar, mm -hmm. as it's called. Mm -hmm. And that does seem really to be, to be distinctively human. It's a very, very clever trick for winding up the value of, of uh, expression and communication through, through language. Now, this has led, of course, many people far more em eminent than I am to suggest that um, <laughs> if it's unique to human beings, that form of uh, language, it's, a, it's capable of being acquired by all human beings. You find it in every mm. group of humans, however widely spread, then it must be genetically built into us, determined, innately determined. We have a kind of language mm. module in our brains, all set there to go. Babies acquire language very, very rapidly, including learning the rules of grammar and so on, very, very rapidly. And I think we need to stand back a little back bit from, from that and say, well, what is it that could be programmed about language? Clearly, the vocabulary couldn't be. I mean, the genes can't know that, you know, it's, it's rouge in French and red in, <laughs> in, in English and rot in, in, in German. Um, so that can't be pre-specified. That has to be learned individually. The grammar, well, Chomsky tried for a long time to divide, to, uh, to discern absolutely universal mm. features of grammar that might be represented mm. computationally in the structure of the brain. Maybe that could be inherited, but seems to have retreated from that um, position. And uh, the commonalities now seem to be absolutely minimal between like, the really deep commonalities and maybe could be expressed very simply. Well, I'd be prepared to concede that maybe those things are somehow built into to brains. But we just have the kinds of brains that through their organization, particularly through their plasticity and their learning capacity, um, have this drive towards acquiring language through exposure. That's another point. If children are not exposed to language before the age of eight or so, then they mm. can never learn it. You've got to hear, hear other people speaking in order to yeah. learn to speak. It's yeah. something that's acquired. And if you look at how language is organized in the brain, those classical things in Broca's area, in Wernicke's area, understanding of producing language, where are they placed? Wernicke's area is in just the right place to be at the end of all the processing streams of the sensory systems. And the more we learn from imaging techniques in humans, it more it, more, it looks as though the, the symbolic representations within language, the categories of types of words, for instance, are related to the tail end of sensory processing chain, particularly visual processing. It so for instance, natural. Seems absolutely natural. For instance, verbs, if you speak verbs or ask people to read verbs and ask, see which parts of the brain light up, they seem to be closely related to the stream of areas that's processing movement and action mm. in the visual mm. field, in the mm. visual field. Mm. Mm. And perhaps, you know, through evolutionary processes, that bit of brain has been conveniently placed so that inevitably it somehow comes to represent symbolically the relationships between things and the actions between things mm. that are expressed in the form of, mm. Uh, mm. Uh, of, of verbs. Look, just to sort of focus the question, for all the lines of argument that, that language is deeply innate in human beings, the fact that um, there are parts of the brain that do it, particular parts of the brain that do it, that children require it very rapidly, that there are genetic disorders of, of, sure. of language and so on, you can apply exactly the same lines of argument to reading and writing. And all human beings are capable of it, pretty much, as far as we know. They don't, don't all do it because they've got to be exposed to books, but they're, you know, in, in principle, all human groups are capable of reading and writing. There are particular parts of the brain that seem to be involved in doing it. There are genetic disorders, there's developmental dyslexias. Sure, sure. But we know we've only been doing it for 5,000 years, and our genes were pretty much stabilized 200,000 years. It cannot be innately determined. Reading and writing cannot be innately pre-specified. But aren't reading and writing just subsets of language? Well, well, yeah. well they're, su they're subsets of the process of representation of, uh, of, of language. But they're certainly quite separate functions from, from, sp from spoken language. Yeah, but I think, Even, I think we would have a broader concept of language as a mechanism of communication. I mean, I would say sign language. 
which is neither written nor nor uh, spoken, is 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 as much a language. Some people would say is as rich a language yeah. with the emotion uh, and people it, and do it, it. And it seems to share a lot of the same brain machinery as as well. Right, right, so right, spoken right, spoken right, language, right. including the rules of how it's acquired and when it mm, can be mm. uh, acquired. Absolutely. Right, right. But reading and writing are really distinctly very different. Um, uh, I mean, for, for principally, we, we know that we have only been doing it for a, a very, very short period of time for compared sure. with, the, the, with the, the stage at which our, our genes evolved and, and, and stabilized. Sure. So it could not, the capacity to read and to write, which, which require very particular skills, quite different from speaking mm -hmm, and understanding mm -hmm. spoken sure, speech, sure, sure. could not have been pre-programmed by our genes. Right, we just have right, the right, kinds right, of brains that are able right, to do that. Same right. way that we have brains that can drive a car or fly a plane. You know, right, we weren't designed genetically to do that. Right. We just have very versatile brains right. with, with lots of extra space within our brains to, to organize new computational right. processes. And indeed, virtually everything we do in the world today are, are not the kinds of things that our brain the, uh, specifically evolved for, but have come along for the ride, as it were. Well, absolutely, and and you know, our brains, the brain of a present day kid using their mobile phone and <laughs> and and playing on their computer and probably very rarely reading a yeah. book are different brains yeah, yeah, from the brains yeah. of kids 30, 40 years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think we should be too worried about that because think of what they can do with that extra brain right, space right. that we, in our generation, uh, couldn't do. Mm. I think actually we should celebrate the fact that we have brains that are so versatile that they can change themselves mm. from generation mm. to generation in the way that they use themselves. What would be the implications of this for the nature of consciousness? I'm glad you asked that. I think there's a, a very intimate relationship between the high-level aspects of consciousness, and I really mean consciousness of self, yeah, yeah, yeah. and consciousness yeah, right, right, right. of intention, the concept that I am the helmsman of myself, right. carrying myself around the world, right, right, making decisions. Right, right. I think that maps in a very interesting way onto the structure of language. Um, if you think about it, I mean... Language, the grammatical forms of language are very intentional in their, in their style. There are subjects who go around doing things, acting on objects and on the world. The whole, the whole arrangement is, is very much a, a, one, a kind of almost a dualist one uh, of an actor um, with intentional purposes in, in the world. And that's the way we conceive of ourselves. And that, of course, produces big worries for the philosophers on the one hand, the physicists on the other, thinking, well, where are the causes coming mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. in a device that thinks that it's con controlling itself just from within? So, so I think it's worth pursuing the idea that, that our conscious, that our subjective interpretation of ourselves as being the helmsman of our actions, causing our actions, intending our actions, is actually a sort of what I've called a meta-representation of how the brain really works. It's a false representation in the same way that, and I think it's an interesting analogy, looking on your computer screen, on your PC, you see a whole lot of little icons that, that represent processes, okay. like, you know, the, uh, the, uh, dispo, the garbage can or whatever, yeah. and you move things around. They represent other operations that are really happening in the machine, which are much more complicated. Mm -hmm. You can understand at an iconic level what's mm -hmm. going on from these things, and they map very loosely onto the real processes below. I think a consciousness, conscious representation of self is a bit like that. It's a meta-representation of other things that are really doing the works down below. Big, big difference, of course, is that the computer screen is there for, a, for an obvious purpose, that is for another person to look at it mm -hmm. and to interpret what's happening in the machine. Well, who's looking at our consciousness except ourselves? We're looking at our own meta-representation. Why should we go to the trouble? Why should our brains go to the trouble of building this false representation of how we really are? And I think the key is to implement and to support language. It's building mm -hmm. a model of each individual person which maps on to the same kinds of models that other people hang, carry around in their head and, imp and supports this curious form of communication which is very much dualistically dominated in, in terms of intentions that, that syntax, that grammar is. So it's there to support language. So if consciousness is there to support language, mm -hmm. but language uh, is not a, uh, in, in a selective for ev ev evolutionary uh, uh, process, but, but has come along for the ride because of other things, plasticity, whatever, uh, what does that imply about consciousness? Yeah, well, the same, the same argument, <laughs> that, that, that we don't come pre-programmed to be conscious that we learn to be conscious.
And you know, anyone who's watched a child grow up, I may be very difficult to, to argue that a newborn baby has the same kind of depth, richness, and completion of consciousness that a, that a 50, 60-year-old person does. I mean, Our consciousness anybody, develops and changes I, over time. I, I don't think there's any doubt that the, in terms of the richness, but there seems to be a, a, um, a, a step function between consciousness and unconsciousness, mm. and maybe dreaming is some intermediary state, but uh, mm. that, you know, a... a, a at, my, at your earliest memory, when maybe mm. three, four years old, you have a fleeting memory. Uh, you're con you have a consciousness awareness of, of that time. Well, you've got, but what do you have an awareness of? Events, places, objects. You have a, you have a sense of self, but not, but not as. Ah, oh, I rather doubt it. Maybe three, four, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, at that point, you, 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 but it's not a very rich one. But mm. but it's it's it's, yeah. it's it's something that you feel. Yeah. I mean, I can project you know, myself. I think, I think conversations re re reflecting the inadequacy of our vocabulary. I mean, we're using a single word, consciousness, to, to mean and refer to many, many other aspects yeah, of subjectivity. Yeah, um, yeah, I think probably a newborn baby has a, a kind of brute awareness of the physical world, sensory experiences, perceptions, I would guess and ants do as well, in, in a funny sort of way. Yeah, yeah. But on top of that, just the existence of subjectivity grows through individual experience the complexities of the of the internal representation of self things, existence and complexity complexity i agree grows and changes but mm. I, th I think existence may be a step function there or not and then it can grow and get richer no well you know there's empirical evidence here you can you can you can you know, can test whether the babies show signs that they recognize that they are an individual. Mm. You know, the mirror, dots mirror on the test, forehead, dots yeah. on the nose mm. and the forehead, or whatever you know, and it's it's uh, eighteen months or whatever, mm. and then tests of whether they, when they begin to understand that other people mm. can have right. ideas, yeah. concepts, knowledge, which are different from their uh, from their own. You know, and this comes three, four right. years old or so. I would I would think of this as a gradual accumulation mm. of an internal model of what you are yourself, mm. and the model is flawed, but flawed in ways that kind of work. Because it provides a vehicle for communicating with other people who have the same flawed models of themselves. And it's language that conveys that and the structure of conscious interpretation of self maps onto the way in which we use language. I just have a gut feeling that consciousness, self-consciousness and uh, language have emerged, avoiding the word evolved, uh, but have emerged in humanity together.